Hi, hello, it is Wednesday and on Wednesday we sort of are going to wear pink and we're also going to pair some Pat McGrath palettes. So without further ado, I'm going to start doing my makeup. I'm going to take the Inglot Eyeshadow Keeper as usual to apply as a base for my eyeshadows. I thought this thing was almost done, but no, it's going strong and I haven't even cut the tube yet. I can still squeeze things out and I know that after I'm done squeezing things out, there will still be plenty um, left in the tube. But for now it's going strong and I am just going to continue enjoying it. Taking the Estee Lauder foundation in the shade 2 and 1. I love this foundation but gosh I will never get over the fact that they don't have a pump with it. It's so crappy to have to take the product out because I definitely take too much out. Every time I put it on my hand. Like look at this. This is now at least for like one more use or something. And I try not to, but you tilt the tube just a little bit more because you need just one more drop and then BAM! Five drops come out. Also, you have seen that I'm back to applying foundation and that kind of thing with a sponge because it is winter, skin is dry and I do think that the sponge really applies the foundation slightly more dewy. Look at all of this expensive foundation wastage. I really hate that. And I know that I can like buy a separate um, pump for it. I do actually have a pump on the 3N1, which is my summer shade. I think this is a pump from MAC. But even with the pump, it's still actually not working because I can't really take any product out with the pump. So for whatever reason, it's just not working very well. And I just really hate that. Taking the Skin Correct Concealer from Dior in the shade 1N. And lately I haven't felt the need to use the uh, Auric Glow Lust. I mean, don't get me wrong, my under eyes can always use a little bit more brightening and hydration. But I guess I've been feeling a little bit lazy. I've been feeling so lazy that I can barely get out of bed in the morning. It's gotten really dark, really cold here and motivation to get out of bed is sub-zero. Speaking of sub-zero and you know the winter months, before you know it, December's going to roll around and I will have to, well not I will have to, I will be doing all sorts of end of the year content. Um, usually when I do my like favorites of the year or best of the year, I kept it quite like low-key, I haven't really done it in categories, but I actually think this year I can have favorites for each of the categories, which is really exciting. So I think this year I'm going to actually do this in categories per product and talk about my uh, favorite per category. Taking the Gucci Finishing Powder in Matte Natural. I'm going to quickly do my brows with the Too Faced Laminating Brow Wax. In other exciting news, I didn't really get a shipping notification from Victoria Beckham, so I was a little bit surprised uh, because usually they're really, really fast. But I did get a notification from um, DPD that the package is actually coming. So either today or tomorrow the package will be here. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to try the little contour thing and the stick highlighter. I'm actually happy that I'm going to get a stick highlighter because I have all of these like cream bronzers and blushes and I don't mind to mix textures but honestly I do prefer to have everything in the same texture and I do only have one cream, hi cream highlighter that I really like which is the Daniel Sandler uh, liquid highlighter. So for bronzer, someone you haven't really seen on my channel in a while, I have been using it a little bit more the last couple of weeks, but I don't think on camera. So this is a diffuse uh, bronze light from Hourglass, which is one of my favorite winter bronzers because it is so beautifully, you know, neutral in tone, slightly cool. And it is just such a gorgeous, gorgeous formula. I keep thinking that at some point I should just really pick up one of those uh, Hourglass palettes because I'm sure I'm going to love the formula of the blushes in there. I can just never really select a palette because not one is perfect for me. 
and they're rather expensive so you kind of want the perfect one if you're buying it. Speaking of products that you see a little bit more seasonally, here is one that is a little bit more seasonal but remains one of my absolute favorite products of all time. This is uh, the shade Rosy Beige from Gucci. And I just love this color for the winter. It is the perfect like nudie mauve. The reason I am stippling it instead of blending it is for some of you who have watched my channel for a bit longer, you will remember that last year I found out that if you actually go and blend this blush out, then it becomes quite much more mauve pink and I would like it to remain a bit more nude mauve. So that's why I stipple it because I feel like that really preserves the tone that I personally prefer for this blush. I'm going to highlight with the Rev de Camellia highlighter from Chanel, an older limited edition highlighter that I actually purchased just recently and I keep getting questions from uh, some of you in my comments how I was able to obtain this. Honestly, I have no idea. Sheer dumb luck. I was on Vinted, I saw it, I purchased it, didn't even blink and I think the only, really the only way to find it is like this. If you just are lucky to be on one of those platforms at the right moment when someone is selling theirs and I was even luckier because it was new. It was unopened, brand new and that makes a huge difference with a product like this where you, where you have this beautiful embossing and if the embossing is part of the experience for you, which it was for me, um, it actually makes a difference in, if the product has been unused. So I was just extremely, extremely lucky. Breathed my brush with a little bit of Fix Plus and I'm just going to blend all the powders on my face together. I keep being very tempted by the setting spray from Lisa Eldridge because um, I've got a bit of an obsession with Lisa Eldridge's brand. So if someone can comment if you have her setting spray and how, what do you think about it compared to other setting sprays in your collection? Is it something worth picking up? You know, the way I feel about Lisa Eldridge products is they are on the expensive side, but they're such excellent quality. They're so beautifully packaged. Just everything about them and the customer service surrounding it are so on point, so professional that I don't mind splurging on her makeup. But you know, setting spray is one of those things where I feel like, do I really need one from Lisa Eldridge just because it's Lisa Eldridge? So if you guys have, you know, any experience with her setting spray, I would love to hear about it. Okay, let's get into the makeup look. I'm going to first take the Celestial Nirvana palette, which is the Holiday Mega Mothership from last year. And I'm going to take a big fluffy blending brush and going to go into this more neutral to cool toned brown. We apply a little bit of that through my crease as a somewhat more cooler toned um, crease shade. Was contemplating between this shade and one of the shades in the new Mega Mothership, the lightest matte in um, sp sp Splendor, something Starstruck Splendor. Oh my god, I wanted to say a Smoldering Splendor. <laughs> I'm just messing up all of her product names by now more of like a light shading through the crease and the um, main star of today's show basically is going to be the Passion Fleur Quad. One of you uh, commented that you had bought this with the Black Friday sales and then I realized that I haven't really used this quad in a hot minute and I haven't really made much content with it since it came out. I think it was probably one of the more underwhelming palettes that I have bought from Pat McGrath this year. But then again, I felt quite similarly about Venusian Sunrise and I've been using Venusian Sunrise like a crazy person the last four weeks. So who knows, maybe I will start a love affair with Passion Fleur. And speaking of Passion Fleur, I'm going to go into the deep purple shade now and I'm going to push that in my lashes as um, a bit of a liner moment. So right here. Man, I wish this was just a little bit more cool toned and had a little bit less red in it. It's still one of the, you know, better purples from Pat on me. But if it was just a little bit more cool toned, I think I would have liked it better. Oh, now on camera it's looking really red. Hopefully when I go to edit it will look normal. And then I'm going to take the tiniest bit of the NYX Glitter Glue to apply on my lids 
And all over the lid I'm going to apply the uh, light top shade from Passion Fleur, which I think is the best shade in that quad, or at least my personal favorite. It's just a really beautiful like neutral taupe. So like I said, this shade is going to go all over my lids. It is a really, really beautiful neutral taupe. And now I can't remember if I prefer this shade with my fingers or with a brush. So let me find that out real quick. Hmm, I don't know that it really makes a difference. I'm going to try on this eye to apply it just with my fingers. Oh yeah, I think that actually applies it a little bit more seamlessly. Okay, go with your fingers, not with the brush. I think with the brush maybe I just picked up a little bit too much flakes. And you can see again that it doesn't look as nice as it does here. Here it just looks much more soft and seamless. Speaking of soft and seamless, I'm going to give everything a nice little blend in the crease. I'm going to take this light pink over here to apply as an inner corner highlight. And I must admit, this is another really, really pretty shade in this uh, quad. For some reason, I'm not a huge fan of like the coppery orange shade that is in this uh, palette. It's not bad. It's just so unremarkable and so redundant in Pat's collection that I just felt a little bit underwhelmed by it. But luckily, these two other shades are really compensating for it. And before I apply the little topper moment, I'm going to go back into Celestial Nirvana. And I'm actually going to apply a combination of the two brown shades on my lower lashes because I don't really want to apply the purple. I think that um, sort of will intensify the effect of this purple on my eyes looking more tired. So I think I'm going to just keep it quite, you know, localized to the upper lashes and go for the browns on my lower lashes because I think that's really going to ground the look. And finally, for the icing on the cake for this look, I'm going to take the uh, Risky Rose Quad from Pat McGrath from the Holiday Collection 2021. And I'm going to take this beautiful shade over here. This is Lavendering to apply as a little topper moment on my lids, just to tie the look together also with my sweater, because my sweater is a relatively cool toned, you know, mauve. And I think there are a lot of like cooler toned sparklies in Lavendering, so these two shades are just made for each other. I actually wanted to, to show you the lipstick as well because it is another one of the loosens from Lisa Eldridge that you haven't really seen on my channel yet. This is the shade Rose Official. Um, I've already lined my lips and I've applied my lip primer, so let's just uh, go in with the lipstick. I've already worn it once, so I have an idea how the color looks. It's a really beautiful like rosy nude. That was really also the reason that I purchased it. I wanted to have something in the Lucent formula, which is nude, but leans a little bit more on like the rosy side without being too pink. And I think this actually strikes a really perfect uh, balance. I quite enjoy it. I hope that with my crazy lighting, you can still see how pretty uh, Lavendering layered over top of that uh, neutral shade from the Passion Fleur Quad. I really enjoy the look a little bit low key, uh, again, a little bit more on the neutral side. I've been leaning a little bit more towards the neutral looks lately which you can probably also tell from the videos that I've done lately as well as my Instagram account where if you scroll through the past like weeks you will see an overwhelming abundance of really neutral looks but uh, what can I say apparently winter gets me in the mood for uh, neutral looks so here we are I hope that you enjoyed this video do let me know what you thought about this look as usual thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video bye